Our text today comes from John chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. This is going to be familiar to the folks that uh, are part of our Wednesday Bible study because we're studying the Gospel of John, and, and we've had some interesting insight into the life of Christ through John's eyes. Uh, as I read and I share, hear these words as they are the words of God. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of Purinard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was uh, later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It's worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what? was pulled uh, put into it leave her alone jesus replied it was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial you will always have the poor among you but you will not always have me this is the word of god for the people of god in a time when we see a different expression of our culture take form. (laughs) We're beginning to see a culture where contempt for the other is so quickly and easily spoken. There is the temptation to use one's voice to detract from our divine purpose. And so we hear these voices And these voices speak louder and louder and louder. In a time when we think that if we just speak louder, we will be the prevailing voice. Folks, we miss the opportunity of exchanges with the divine that ultimately change our lives. We are a people who have been called to build up and to encourage one another, yet we find it so much easier to concentrate on what we see as wrong without giving a chance for someone to really be who they actually are. There is a fine line between being a part of the solution and being a detractor among those who are eager to do good, the good they were created to do, the good they were called to do. So what's behind the protest? What's behind the contempt? These seem to be the bigger questions to answer. What we've learned in our Bible study, John's gospel is a treasure trove of wisdom, insight, and intellect where where John shows us that God had a definitive purpose, a divine purpose, a mandate, that he desired to have fulfilled. Jesus was the fulfillment of that divine purpose. Through the obedience of Jesus, he provides God's final answer to what it means to be reconciled and forgiven. Jesus, folks, is the way through which we are given the opportunity to live within our divine purpose. Each of us have a divine purpose. No one is excluded. Are we living in then to that divine purpose? Rory Lesson, who is often quoted in in, in, uh, uh, meaningful ways, is one of the four founders of Outreach Publications Ministry. Uh, You probably know it a little better by Day Spring Cards. He's an active Bible teacher, and he says this, when we received the gift that God has given us in Jesus, 
Wisdom discovers what a priceless treasure we've been given. And as we come to know him day by day, his light grows brighter, his words grow richer, his grace grows greater, his ways grow more meaningful, and his love deepens in our hearts. The Wednesday evening Bible study group, as they work through the Gospel of John, have just completed this narrative that I read a few weeks ago. But we learned that chapter 12 marks the end of Jesus' public ministry and begins the preparation for the ultimate reality of the cross and the grave. At the outset of this, Jesus is anointed, as we've just read, in anticipation of his death. And this anointing had a divine purpose, and it set the stage for all that was to come. Now, John wants us to know that the events that have just occurred are on the heels of the rest that is to come. He quickly identifies why Judas objects to the use of the costly perfume. He calls him a thief, a contemptuous person who often stole money from the common purse that was used to help the poor, the needy, the orphan, and the widow. John, likely more than anything else, wants future audiences to know that Judas is an unfaithful thief who betrayed Jesus to cover up his own sin. Judas is the villain. And John quickly names him as such and calls him Useless. Mm. Jesus had a divine purpose, which Judas would play a hand in accomplishing. We don't often think about that. He needed a betrayer to fulfill the prophecy. And Judas is noted as the one in whom there was greed, ambition, and worldliness that had crept into his heart. Now think about this this person. No one really knows, folks, the real reason why Judas did what he did. But his objection to Mary using the expensive perfume reflects the true condition of his heart. Our actions and our words often reflect the true condition of our heart. Maybe, just maybe, Judas is tormented by the purity of Jesus and his own unrighteousness. And that's just a guess. Maybe he was beginning to realize how he was really seen by the others, how they held him in contempt, how they despised him. We don't know. But they definitely have no problem in their writings characterizing him as a vile thief as someone who would betray the one who had a divine purpose. Huh. This we do know about Judas. Everything and everyone has a divine purpose, even each of us. Lazarus needed a miracle working Savior. Mary in this text required a master whom she could serve. Martha just needed to be busy. And we need a Lord to give us a hope that we have a divine purpose. There's a little of all of them in us. Yet, Jesus reveals to us in a very clear way that we have a divine purpose to fulfill as a church. We have a message and a reason to show the lavish love of God to each other. This is our divine purpose, to love God and to love others, even as we love ourselves. So folks, as we draw our attention to the table of the Lord, we are left with this closing thought and inquiry. 
What will it take and what do we do to fulfill our own divine purpose? Understanding and knowing that each of us has a deep, deep deep-seated need to be used by God for the glory of God, to honor God in all of our ways. May we constantly seek out and be about our divine purpose today and always as we pray. Oh God, you have given all to us. Lord, we return it. Everything is yours. Do with it what you will. Give us all your love and your grace that we may live out our divine purpose. That is enough for us. Amen.